In the reptile hobby, what you see isn't always what you get. And that's especially true for red tail boas. Most of the red tail boas you see in reptile shops aren't even really red tail boas. In this video, I'm gonna to try to help you understand the difference between the common boa or boa constrictor imperator and the boa constrictor constrictor or the true red tail boas. My name's Pierce LaValle, this is Pierce's Planet, stick around. Everybody and welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing amazing. I know I am. Things are going well, life is great, and I cannot complain. If you guys could do me a favor and please click that subscribe button and click on that notifications bell so you guys do not miss out on any new Pierce's Planet uploads. With me here, I have my newest member of the family. And this is a Guyana red tail boa who I have named Merlot. You guys can probably guess why I named her Merlot because she's got that nice wine colored tail and you know her brother likes to drink a little wine now and then. <laughs> no, seriously, I don't I don't drink anymore, so. I got her from one of the best breeders that I know of, and that is Nerd, New England Reptile Distributors, and she is just a doll. And I alluded to her in my last video, I'll put that link up there so you guys can, can watch that if you want to, but I alluded to her in my last video because I told you guys I had a cage set up for her, and I am just so excited to have her. She just took down a rat a few days ago, so she got her first meal in, so now I feel comfortable with handling her knowing that she is eating well and she took that rat right away. This is one of my dream reptiles. I have always wanted to have a red tail boa and now I finally have one. This girl is just beautiful, just beautiful. So because I have her out today, I decided to try to answer one of the one of the most common questions in when it comes to red tail boas and that is what's the difference between a BCI boa and a BCC boa? And that's a question that I was asking for the longest time. I really never understood what the difference between the two were. I thought that all boas that you saw were red tail boas because in the stores and the pet shops, every time you go in there, you see red tail boa, red tail boa, red tail boa. But most of the time, those aren't actual red tail boas. So the BCCs or the boa constrictor constrictors like Merlot here are the true red tail boas. These are actually red tail boas and as you can see, they have that beautiful red tail that only gets better as they get older. So let's start off by talking about the geography of these two snakes. So these two species of snakes are separated by the Andes Mountains. And the Andes Mountains run throughout South America. And that is pretty much the border that draws the line between BCCs and BIs. So boa imperators, or the common boas, are the ones that are gonna be found mainly in Central America and the islands surrounding Central America, as well as a little tiny bit of South America, mainly in Colombia, parts of Colombia. The BCCs are on the eastern side of the Andes Mountains, and they are basically found mainly in the Amazon Basin. Guyana, or Suriname, or Peru, or parts of Colombia, those are where you're going to find all of the true red tail boas. The Andes Mountains basically acts as a naturally occurring border that separates these two species of boas. And I'll try to put a map up and hopefully I can maybe draw a line to kind of show you guys where where the separation is, but, but that is really important when understanding these snakes because I know in pet shops, a lot of the snakes will be Colombian red tail boas. So Colombians are the most confusing when it comes to trying to figure out the geography of if it's a true red tail boa or not because 
BIs and BCCs come from, both come from Colombia. So because of this geography difference between these two, that causes their care to be a little bit different. And that's why it's important to know what you're getting, whether it's a BCC or a BI, because boa and parotters come from areas that have a little bit more fluctuation in the weather. Whereas BCCs come from mainly the Amazon basin where the weather doesn't really change too often and, and they pretty much get that constant temperature year round. And so that affects the way you keep them because a BI is a little bit more hardy in that sense where they can handle a little bit more temperature change and humidity change. Whereas a BCC might be a little bit more sensitive to those things. Now that's not always the case but in general it's just something that you might want to keep in mind as far as physical differences between the two there are two main ones that I know of and the first one is obvious the first one is that beautiful red tail now unfortunately I do not have any BI's to show you so I'll have to rely on pictures to to show you guys what a BI looks like. But as you can see with these BCCs, that tail is just beautiful. And it only gets more red and more burgundy, maroonish colored as they get older. Hence why I named this girl Merlot because she, her tail looks like you know, looks like some, some good wine. BIs on the other hand, their tail's gonna stay a little bit more dull. It's gonna be a little bit more on the browner side. Now, like I said, that's not always the case. Obviously, you could find some exceptions, but as a general rule, that's kind of what you can look for. Some people also say that you could kind of tell the difference between the two types of snakes in their saddles or the markings that are on the back of their body. BCCs have more of a bat wing symbol look to them where they have these skinny, markings on their back and they have that come up to that this little point and it kind of looks like the Batman symbol whereas BIs I like to think of them as just more blotchy they're just kind of more circular or square shaped they don't really have that curvature to them the markings on the back isn't the best thing to go by but you can go by that if need be also BCC's in their naturally occurring colorations have a little bit more color to them they can have these pink hues and also like these little purplish hues to them to their bodies whereas BI's aren't going to really have that too much BI's will have most of the morphs that you are going to see I'd say probably about 95% of boa morphs that you will see Nah, screw that. 98% of boa morphs that you will see are going to be boa imperators and not boa constrictor constrictors. I have rarely seen uh, a true red tail boa with a with a with a color morph. There might be more out there. I I, I not that I know of though. So. Anything you see, all the sun glows and the motleys and the IMGs, all of those are boa and parotters. And you really, if you want a boa constrictor constrictor, you kind of just have to have to settle for their naturally occurring coloration, which I mean, come on, that is not too shabby, right? Not in my book. I, that's why I ended up getting Merlot because their naturally occurring coloration is just so, so, so beautiful. Another general difference between the two is that BCCs tend to get a little bit larger than BIs. Now, BIs can get very large, and there are some examples of some very large BIs, but for the most part, true red tail boas are going to get larger than common boas. So a Guyana red tail boa like Merlot here can get to the upwards of 10 or more feet long where her average is going to be around 8 feet. Whereas a common boa they're going to max out at around 6 to 7 feet on average but there, are, like I said there are some exceptions of, of ones getting very very large. Boa and parotters have all of the dwarf species so all of the island species and the smaller species the those are those are all bi's so that's why on average they tend to get a little bit smaller than the true red tail boas so a lot of people say that bcc's can be a little bit more on the defensive side and i guess that 
can be true in my opinion that's more because they haven't been bred in captivity for as long so they most of the ones that you see or a lot of the ones that you see are going to be imported straight from the wild and so obviously they're going to be a little bit more defensive merlot here was was captive bred and and look how beautiful she is i mean look how calm she is she's just a really sweet snake so if you go out and you want to buy a red tail boa and you see all these different kinds of boas and you don't know which one is a true red tail boa the price can also help you figure it out in most cases you will not see a true red tail boa for under four hundred dollars that's just it's really not gonna happen unless you're getting a really good deal or you're getting it from somebody who really needs to get rid of it if you're buying a captive bred true red tail boa you are not going to get one for under four hundred dollars so most of the ones that you see at petco or PetSmart, and they're selling them for a hundred dollars or you know even 150 dollars most likely that is going to be a bi or a common boa if it is a true red tail boa then it had to have been imported and i don't recommend doing that i don't recommend getting any snakes from petco or PetSmart, but you know if i'm just using those two as as examples and that's why i think it's important to know what you're looking for if you want to buy a a true red tail boa because there's going to be a lot of places out there that are going to either intentionally or unintentionally try and sell you a common boa under the name that it is a red, true red tail boa and whether they're doing that on accident because they just don't know any better or they're doing it on purpose because they're trying to make extra money off of a snake that they're trying to get rid of so it's just good for you to know so you don't end up spending all of your money on the wrong species of snake so that is it for today's video, you guys. I hope you guys got something out of this video. I know I could just ramble and talk forever, but I hope that I was at least a little bit informative and helped you guys out a little bit and helped you guys understand the difference between these two a little bit better. So leave a comment and let me know if I did that or not. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, and please, please, please share this video. I wanna give a huge shout out to Kevin McCurley and Nerd. Kevin McCurley is the owner of Nerd, and I've gotten my last two snakes from New England Reptile Distributors, and I could not be happier. I like, when I when I get new reptiles, I like to know that they're coming from a, a reliable source, and Nerd is some of the best of the best. I watch their YouTube channel all the time and, and just kind of try to absorb the knowledge that's on there. So I will make sure that I put the links to their Instagram and their YouTube channel in my bio so that if you guys are interested in them, you guys can check them out. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Until next time, everybody, my name is Pierce LaValle. This is Pierce's Planet. And remember, it's all about the reps, baby. Peace. Please do me a favor and please click that subscribe button and hit that notification. So this video is gonna be so this video is gonna be all about general So this video is going to be all about general generalities. So this video is going to be all about general So this video is going to be all about generalizations.